welcome everybody to our service here at Danville United Methodist Church for May 3rd. And uh, on my announcement sheet, and I'm going to go ahead and say this, uh, please turn your cell phones off, okay? Be watching me, not somebody else. Unless you're watching me on your cell phone, then you better keep it on. Uh, also, uh, we will not meet again uh, as, a worship, as a worshiping congregation together until at least the 24th. So uh, just stay tuned and keep watching us on Facebook and I'll post the announcements there as they come. Now I want to announce our birthdays for this week. Uh, the fifth is Jenna and Tora Eggleton. The seventh is Christine Bottoms and the ninth is Orvaline Holbrook and we're gonna sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. 
So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And this is the word of God for the people of God. You know, I, I've been wanting to talk about something other than the coronavirus, other than uh, the COVID-19. But uh, I, I watched another preacher this past week, and, and no, not one of my colleagues in the United Methodist Church or even in town here, but a big television preacher. And that preacher was uh, kind of scary, I have to tell you, because one of the things he did was, you know, he, he equated the COVID virus to the flu. You know, he, he was one of those that said that, oh, it's not as bad as you're making it out to be. Then he said also that if you're afraid, if you have fear, then that's a sin. Got to think about that. I thought, well, isn't fear a natural response to things in our lives. Think about it for a moment. Pain in our bodies lets us know that something's wrong and we need to go seek help. Fear keeps us from doing dumb things, keeps us from endangering ourselves or others by doing something that we know could end up badly. And so I don't see how fear is necessarily a sin. Uh, now, I do think, you know, if you if you dwell on things or if you obsess about these kinds of things, that yes, it can lead to sin because, you know, if you just lock yourself up and have no contact with anybody, even via the phone or uh, Facebook or Messenger, whichever, whatever you use, then, yeah, you're probably getting a little carried away with, your, with the fear. But fear is not a bad thing. We need to recognize what has happened in our world. We need to be a little bit of afraid of things because that's how we keep ourselves safe. That's how we keep others safe. Uh, just to give you an idea, the uh, US was involved in the Vietnam War for 20 years. And in that time, 58,000 American lives were lost. In two months of COVID-19, 65,000 American lives have been lost. That's more than 20 years of the Vietnam War. So this is a serious thing. It's something that we all need to pay attention to. And one of the things that gets me about it is that we respond to this not out of fear so much as out of love. Because I love my family. I love the people in my church. And if I love them, I don't want to harm them. I don't want to introduce them to something that might hurt them or, or make them sick. That's why we're not meeting as a church at this time, so that we don't take that risk. Because it's, it's, it's an unnecessary risk. Because we are worshiping still. We worship in our homes. We worship uh, here in spirit. And when I look out and see all the pictures on the pews, y'all are with me. And uh, I, I like that. It, it helps me feel better about this. In Ephesians uh, chapter 5, Paul tells the church at Ephesus, he says, Husbands ought to love their wives as Christ loved the church. And when he says that, what he's telling them is that, you know, we ought to love our families with a sacrificial love. In other words, we ought to be willing to not do things in order to protect our families out of love for them. Just like, you know, we ought to be willing to go to work and do the things that need to be done in order to provide for our families, we also need to take care of them and guarantee their safety. I've been watching the news lately, which I don't often do, but you know, I've got a lot of time on my hands, so I've been watching some news, and I've seen a lot of these protests where people say, you know, that, well, I live in a free country and I ought to be free to 
go to places that I want to go to and eat at restaurants I want to eat at and do the things that I want to do without the government telling me that I can't. I got to thinking about that. that. Is that what it means to be free? To do whatever you want? Think about it. In this country, you can't go to a crowded movie theater and cry fire if there's not a fire. So doesn't that infringe on freedom of speech? You know, there are some things that we do need to be told to do because just like every one of those folks that are in those uh, protests, they wouldn't do it. And that endangers not just themselves, but their families and the rest of us. So if we're to love as Christ loved the church, then we ought to be taking care of each other. That means loving everybody and not just a certain few and, and, and not condemning people because they're afraid or because they uh, behave differently than we do in the face of this uh, virus that's affecting our world. We ought to love them as Christ loves them and that's unconditionally. So when you go out and you do something, go to Walmart or whatever, think about your family at home. And how what you do there affects them. Because you may take something back to them, but your health is also important to them. And just common sense tells us that we need to take care of ourselves so that we can care for those whom we love. And we need to love each other just as Christ loved us. With that sacrificial heart that's willing to give its life. Amen. join us in communion today and I'm going to bless the elements of communion and then uh, serve them to Jenna and we want you to share with us with your own bread and cup at home. So on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us he took the bread that was on the table and he broke that bread and he gave it to his disciples and said take, eat this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these acts, Lord, we ask that you would bless us, Lord, and redeem us with your love. Let us pray. Gracious God, Lord, we thank you this day that we share together, even though we're apart. We share together in your grace and in your blessing. And Lord, we pray this day for all those who are in need. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them, giving them your peace, your blessing, your grace, and just the knowledge, Lord, that they do not face whatever it is that has darkened their lives alone. Lord, we pray a prayer of thanksgiving today for all those, Lord, who are taking care of us, who are watching out for us, and who are looking out for our best interests. Lord, we pray today that you would be with them. Keep them safe, Lord. Give them your blessing and let them know how much they are appreciated. Now, Lord, we ask you bless them upon this church and our continued ministry, Lord, to each other out of love, and that out of a reflection of your grace. And Lord, we just ask for your continued presence with us, Lord, and making that known to us in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen.